Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and today I'm going to show you some tricks and techniques that I use to paint these little tiny paper mache dogs. I tried to make the painting uh, part of this project as simple as possible, mostly because I don't like using a magnifying glass when I paint and these guys are so small that you can actually get away with some really simple um, painting methods and still have them turn out really nice. So let me show you how I did this. The easiest dog to paint was the standard poodle because she's just a white dog with three black spots for eyes and nose. I did use a glaze to um, bring out a little bit of that texture so she's not all white. I used the paint to add just a little bit of texture to her fur because she's not really a slick haired dog and here I'm adding just a little um, bumpiness to those um, balls on her head and her ears and, and around her, her feet uh, just to give it kind of a wooly look. After the white was dry I painted the eyes and nose and then I let that dry and then started in on the, um, the glaze. I'm just using the golden acrylic glazing liquid with a little bit of um, burnt umber. I'm putting that on there rather thickly um, the, the glazing liquid keeps it from drying too quickly so that you don't end up with streaks when you're taking it off. And then once that's done, um, you just put it on rather quickly in, in spots where you know that you can work with it and then you take it off with a, a damp paper towel. I didn't want her to look dirty, I just wanted her to not look like she had a slick uh, coat. I want her to be somewhat wooly looking and I think this worked rather well. I let the glaze dry overnight, then I put two tiny little spots of white in her eyes, let that dry, and then she gets a coat of um, matte acrylic varnish, and she's all finished. That was really easy. I think she looks quite elegant, actually. <laughs> I really like her. The Irish Setter was another really easy dog to paint. Uh, Irish Setters, of course, have a lot of different colors of red, but they're not all the same color. But I decided I wanted to go with a deep mahogany. All I did with the setter was give her a base coat um, using burnt umber, burnt sienna, and a touch of raw sienna. Tried to vary it just a little bit so it wouldn't be all one color, but um, the variations are very subtle. And then she got uh, two black eyes and one black nose. That was it. I did the golden retriever almost exactly the same way, except I used a mixture of white, yellow ochre, and just a, just a touch of raw sienna. Um, I tried to vary this uh, a little bit so that she had lighter feathers and ear tips and I used of course the black on the um, eyes, nose and her lower lip. The, the tongue was cadmium red light and white with a little, just a touch of the yellow ochre. The silly basset hound who's waiting patiently for a tummy rub was a little bit more challenging just because she had some spots. Uh, the, the reddest spots were done with burnt sienna mixed with just a little bit of raw sienna and the black ones obviously just straight black. I did use a glaze uh, to make sure that you could see those um, the, the wrinkles really well and that, uh, that you could see the smile on her face. You can see the whites of a basset hound's eyes, um, the kind of droop, and so I added a little line of pink. And then after everything was all dry, I went back with a permanent marking pen and it kind of cleaned up the, the roundness of the eye. I did that with almost all of the dogs, as a matter of fact, because um, frankly I'm, I'm not that great with tiny little brushes, uh, so sometimes they need a little bit of help. The terrier was done exactly the same way as the basset hound, except for the um, the reddish spots were made with raw sienna and white. Um, the only place that I used the glaze on was that mustache. She was supposed to be a fox terrier, <laughs> but I got carried away and added a mustache. Um, and of course, short-haired fox terriers don't have mustache, so she ended up being a mutt. But both of my dogs are mutts too, so hey, that's okay. The bulldog is also a white dog with spots, but he has brindle spots and that makes it a little bit more challenging. You could get out your magnifying glass and spend hours making those little tiny uh, stripes in a brindled spot. Um, I'm too lazy to do that. So I cheated. I made the spots first using raw sienna and a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. Put it on rather thickly. I didn't use any of the glazing liquid, so I had to hurry because I was going to immediately um, pounce it off with a dry paper towel. 
It was a little bit messy. It ended up with a little bit of color on the white parts that uh, needed to be cleaned up again. But I ended up with a kind of a mottled uh, red spot. And when the red was dry, I went back over it, did exactly the same thing but using black. And once that was pounced off with the, um, the paper towel, I ended up with kind of a mottled black and red spot that if you, you know, if you don't look too close, <laughs> it looks like brindle. I think it actually works quite well. I did have to clean it up, like I said, um, the, the white spots, the white parts weren't, weren't supposed to have little black spots on them, but that wasn't all that hard to do. I used some of the pink on the bulldog's lower lip, and I also used fairly heavy amount of glaze I actually wanted the bulldog to look dirty um, just because he, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who wants to take a bath. The most challenging dog to paint amongst uh, this little group was the Shih Tzu, but that's basically because I got so carried away with the texturing. I made her very long fur using the same techniques that you saw uh, previously in my video on uh, adding feathers to the Golden Retriever. And I wanted all that texture to show up really well. I painted her spots in stages, starting out with a, a mixture of yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. I let that dry. And then I darkened the tips of her ears, uh, gave her a nose. Um, doesn't get eyeballs because um, it's all covered up with all that hair. And I let that dry. And then I used the glaze, uh, the golden acrylic glazing liquid, plus a little bit of burnt umber. Um, put it on rather thickly and then pulled it off with a wet paper towel. I wanted to leave it in the recesses of that um, the heavy texture and especially around um, her forehead just to show that she had hair covering those eyes otherwise it might not have been real obvious. Um, she's definitely the most complicated one of all the dogs that I did in this group but it really wasn't all that hard. That's all I have for you today. Um, these little fellows are going to be appearing in my latest book. It should be done, um, I'm hoping by the end of next month, maybe even sooner. I'm almost done, so close. So I'll let you know as soon as that comes out. And in the meantime, be sure and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.